Okay, hello and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ryan Embry, and I am the brand ambassador here at Travel Media Group. I want to first off thank everyone for taking the time to join me on this webinar this afternoon. And I am super excited and thrilled to share this information and content with you all about multi property marketing management. Today, I am joined by Jason Lee, who is our Senior Director of Online Product and IT. And he's going to be helping us walk through some of the multi-property marketing best practices and demonstrations we'll be talking about today. Now, first off, at the end of this presentation and webinar, I will be providing my direct contact information in case you had any follow-up questions with the content that I'll be sharing. You can also use the chat feature, which is located in your toolbar, to type any sort of questions or feedback. I will be responding to those questions personally following the conclusion of the webinar. Also, be sure to have those toolbars uh, handy. We are going to be doing some anonymous polls uh, throughout the uh, presentation as well, um, so make sure you know where that's located. So let's go ahead and get started with multi-property marketing management. And I wanted to start off by just by setting the agenda for the day. So uh, first, what we're going to do is create a multi-property strategy, and we're going to do that through an exercise called Know Your Identity. Next, we're going to jump into some of the best practices and demonstrations for multi-property marketing, and those include a few of the topics. Social media, reputation management, website design, and portfolio reporting and analytics. Well, let's first get started with that exercise. Know your identity as a hotel group. Now, we work with properties uh, from single owners with just a few uh, properties or just a couple properties all the way up to large brands and management groups which manage uh, anywhere from 100 plus properties uh, to 20 plus properties. So we work all throughout um, the spectrum there. But we've been able to identify at least four unique identifiable identities when it comes to management groups and multi-property uh, groups. And the first one is, we'll actually break it up into two separate identities. The first one is the operations identity. And the, that is going to be a top-down approach where marketing decisions are made and operated at the corporate level or through a regional handling multiple properties. So the pros of that is this is very consistent in your messaging and very quick implementation. If you have a, a corporate director of sales that does all of your social media, reputation management, and handles all of your marketing, you usually are going to have a very congruent message uh, throughout your entire portfolio. And if you're able to add uh, new hotels, they're able to onboard a lot quicker than it would be to set someone up at the property. Now, your weaknesses and cons is that sometimes that falls on lack of local or personal touch. If someone from your corporate office is handling one of your properties in a different state, uh, guests can sometimes feel that there's a lack of that local and unique experience that they're looking for. Which takes us to our second operations identity, which is local level autonomy. So in this identity, marketing decisions are made at a local or property level, either by the GM or property D DOS. Now, the pros of this would be that local and personal touch. Uh, they have the day-to-day -day operations, so they know exactly the community news, the events in the area, and what's going on. The cons and weaknesses is that inconsistent messaging and lack of accountability or visibility. It's a lot harder to manage when you have 10 different GMs or DOSs all doing their own things at different properties. So just to get a better gauge and pulse on who we have on the line today, um, I thought it would be good to go ahead and open up a poll to everyone. This is an anonymous poll just to see where you uh, closely relate your operations identity to. Would it be that top-down approach uh, where it's handled by corporate or regionals, or is it the local level autonomy? And I'll give a couple more seconds here and then share that. Also give us a, a really good gauge on how, maybe how to tailor this uh, presentation moving forward. Okay, just waiting a couple more seconds. Looks like several. 
awesome. So let me go ahead and show the results here. So we've got a nice mix here. Um, over half of you actually take that local level autonomy approach. So you have those GMs or DOSs, um, but some of you also are working from a corporate level. So I challenge you throughout this, uh, throughout this presentation to see where those weaknesses and identify those with your uh, property and see maybe where there is some opportunity to strengthen those. Now, the next identity that we come across is something called a portfolio identity. And with this, we talk about where, where your goals are as far as assets go and your mindset. The first is an acquisition mindset. This is where a hotel group or management group are at a point where your goal is to add as many properties to your por portfolio as possible. Now, with this, the pros are an increased opportunity for exposure and visibility. Obviously, the more places you can get equals the more revenue. But the cons of this is when implementing a marketing strategy, it's very basic and foundational. So your goal and target is to, again, keep acquiring these properties. So you might not have that much time to sit down and put a whole marketing strategy together uh, for a new property that's acquired. Now, on the other side of that, we have some groups that might be on the line that are in a asset optimization mode. And this is at where you're at a point where you're happy with the number of properties you have, but you see that there's, uh, are looking for, uh, there's opportunity to optimize revenue with a long-term strategy in mind. So the pros of this would be you do have a mature marketing strategy. Maybe you're doing more creative things like PPC or customization in order to uh, get an effective campaign out there. But with that also comes some cons and weaknesses that those PPC and customization, that requires some advanced resources and tools, either being hiring uh, new staff in order to uh, you know, launch these initiatives or hire third parties to help you and facilitate you in this. So again, I'll go ahead and open this up and I'll see kind of where you think your property is, or your hotel group is, as far as your portfolio identity goes. Now I'll wait just a couple more seconds. Okay, great. I'll go ahead and show those results as well. So we've got 27%, uh, percent, so about a quarter, just a little over a quarter of you are in that acquisition mindset. You're looking to grow that portfolio, but a lot of you are in that asset optimization as well, where you're looking to further your marketing efforts. This will be absolutely critical, this presentation, where we can show you some ways and best practices on how to accomplish both, no matter what identity you are. And at the end of the day, most likely you're going to be e uh, either a hybrid or a combination of, of uh, parts of these four identities. So let's go ahead and hop in into our, our marketing topics. And the first one that we're gonna talk about today is social media best practices. Uh, we know the importance of social media. We've seen it grow uh, in the last decade and it's still continuing to grow. So when it comes to hotel groups and best practices for social media, the first is the foundation. You need to go in, claim, and create profiles for, uh, on all major networks per individual property. Integrating a uh, booking call to actions like a book now button, adding your vanity websites, and making it a direct uh, commission channel, pushing travelers to a direct commission-free booking channel. The next we suggest for management groups is at least four posts per week per, per property. Now we wanna vary these posts every time of the day, so no matter when travelers are coming onto their social media feeds, there is going to be uh, some visibility when it comes to your properties. But we also wanna follow something that we tell hoteliers about the 80-20 rule. 80-20 80, 80, rule is 80% of the time we wanna be pushing out engaging posts, building trust, like quotes, travel tips, quizzes, again, building that trust. And then that 20%, we're turning that trust into transaction. We're asking for that booking from the guest. We're pushing them to our direct booking channels uh, so they can be a, a booking for us. 
Now, this is for those top down to get a more local and personal feel. Connect to local RSS feeds, which might have some more community stories and ideas for posting. And lastly, utilize and leverage social media analytics. So with these social media analytics, uh, through Facebook, you can see a lot in, in different social media types. You can see a lot of demographic information and you can use that information to leverage your posts to make a more successful social media campaign. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the call, we do have Jason on the line and he's actually going to be showing us how we can implement these best practices in a real life scenario uh, with a multi with a multi property management tool called OneView. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Jason. Thank you very and much, Ryan. Just, absolutely. And he's going to be able to show us there. So to kind of piggyback on what Ryan is saying, you know, to, to implement a strategy like this can be tough, especially in a multi-property environment. So whether you chose that top-down approach or that local market level, you still need components of both. So you still need to be able to market at the local level. You still need to be able to, to or hold people accountable at the local level, or you need to be able to access all of that data from one single source. So with OneView, what you're seeing in this case is, is actually a live feed for this hotel. And what's cool about this is that you're getting a live feed of all of your reputation and social data together. But with social media, you have the ability to react quickly. So these tiles that come in for social can be sent to you via SMS, and also through a daily uh, interaction email. But you can comment directly on this. So if you click on this Twitter uh, tile, you can literally comment on this and, and that will, will go directly into Twitter. Um, the same thing is if you look at something, so let's say you have a bunch of properties and you see that they got a, a, a weird tweet or they got something that needs to be taken action on on Facebook, you can actually click assign and you can assign this to a general manager and put your note on it saying, hey, make sure you handle this, let me know how it goes. So now you have kind of a loop of accountability, but you're not just looping in on maybe high level stats, you're actually looking at the individual things that are happening. So you don't have to take that kind of a granular look, you can do more of a high level look, but this enables you to, to be able to do it all in one place. So coming over here from a multi-property perspective, you can have all your properties together in one single dash, so you can switch from feed to feed. So for example, I can go from, from this property over to another property and I can still see all of my feed. Um, but at the same time, let's say now I want to either post or I want the hotel to post, using functions like our social DIY gives you some really cool places to go and curate this information. So I can come in here, I can type a post and all of my connected sites will immediately receive this post. And what's amazing about this is that, especially from, again, that consolidated view, is that the, the credential for social media or the rights to these pages could reside with you at the corporate office. By giving them access to the OneView portal, they can come in, they can make their post without having to actually physically be the owner or be linked as an admin to that account. This also includes them receiving instant messages as well from, from Facebook. Um, so there's a lot they can do here. They can, they can come in, they can type. Like Ryan said, um, you can also use RSS feeds. So in this case, we, you can take an RSS feed, you can add it to a post. Um, I can then come in, I can select the sites that I want it to go to. Um, immediately you can see images, you can see um, the link that it came, came from and also the text um, from the RSS feed and then you can add text. Um, and then post and schedule or schedule that post. So you have the ability to do this, but you also have the ability then at this point to hold someone at the local level accountable, which is a real important factor because as we all know, a lot of times when you're saying, hey, let's start doing this. And then they're like, oh, I tried to get into Facebook and it won't let me in. Um, now you have a great place to hold them accountable, see at a high level of what's happening um, and, then, and then be able to create and implement a strategy. So I'm going to pass it back to you now, Ryan. Okay, awesome, Jason. And we all know that one branch of social media is also uh, reviews. Now Facebook has reviews that you can comment and like on. So that is another crucial uh, chapter to this multi-marketing strategy is your reviews 
and review flow that are coming in. So again, we're gonna talk about some best practices when it comes to managing those, uh, your reputation and review responses. So the first one is, is again, a foundational uh, tip. Set up notifications. Almost on all of these, uh, on these online review sites, you have the ability to set up these notifications coming either to uh, your corporate office, if they handle it up there, or to a local level. So make sure that all of your notifications are set up for online review sites for all of your individual properties. The next is track competitors across your entire portfolio. So if you are in a management group where you have 20 plus markets, that's a lot of different competitors uh, to be tracking. But it is absolutely critical um, to your long-term goals and objectives to know that how your competitors are performing and where you need to get to to outperform them as far as reviews and some of these ranking sites like TripAdvisor. Respond to reviews within 48 hours. So we can already see the trend coming this way, right? The brands are already uh, putting some franchise fees and uh, regulations into place as far as when they need to be responded to. Management groups have taken upon themselves to come in and start putting some, uh, stand, uh, some SOPs together as well. Um, but a 48 hour uh, response time is absolutely necessary, no matter if it's a one star or five star review. And lastly, we're going to talk about this a little bit more in the reporting section at the very end of the, the webinar, but analyzing reputation sentiment, we can learn, again, so much from this data. We're getting more data every single day um, from our travelers. So analyzing that and le leveraging that data can help you invest both your time and your capital investments uh, in the best decision possible. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and send it over uh, to Jason again to show how we can implement this um, through that OneView tool when it comes to multi-property marketing. Uh, thanks again, Ryan. Um, so on that same feed, I'm kind of going back to this. This is this place where you can get all of your information. And just like Ryan said, you'd also be getting Facebook reviews here as well, uh, but they would have a little separate icon on them. Um, but in that same place, you can come in here. If you have our Respond uh, and Resolve uh, program, you can approve reviews here. You can respond to reviews here. Um, and again, you can also um, assign that review to another, um, to another person at the property. Um, you can create a note on there, which is also really cool. Again, that kind of creating more and more communication. And the properties themselves can also add as many people as they want to the system. So they have the ability to add a front office manager and a DOS to this where they can share some of this information across, especially the good news, um, but also when things go wrong to, you know, how, to, how is it that we can uh, make things better and, and share those reviews as well. So this feed, you know, you start with the feed where these are going to be coming in regularly. And just like Ryan said, you're also going to be getting um, a bunch of daily information. So you're going to get instant information, but, the, but those alerts that Ryan was talking about, these come in the form of these daily emails. And you have the ability to come into this daily email and, and connect directly from the email back into the system. So once you do that, you can come in. Like in that case, I just clicked on TripAdvisor, and now you can see that I'm actually in the full TripAdvisor feed. So, so using those, those, those connections and using that, that alert is a real great way to stay on top of stuff. Um, the other thing is, is that you, now you have these individual pieces of reputation that we're working with, but what if you need a high-level um, look? And so the high-level look is really important. So this is where we take all of your sites together. We combine lifetime data, but we also give you the ability to change that lifetime data up. So you can come in and say, hey, I just want to see what happened just in the month of September. So if I do that, now I can actually look at this and see, okay, this gives me a snapshot of what happened that month. But let's say I want to see, hey, I want to see by site in time. Well, we have a 12-month running uh, graph, and these two graphs actually give you a lot of really great data. And the data they give you on the first graph is um, your combined score by month. So this would be a roll-up of all the reviews you've received um, and their combined score. Um, and then below this is um, your positive, neutral, and negative uh, reviews that you received during that month. These graphs are all interactive. They give you the ability to kind of pull off um, pieces of data to, to really drill into maybe something that is lost inside of a lot of combined data together. But still, at the same time, this gives you that high-level view 
and also gives you a place to hold um, your property accountable. And this goes for every single site that we have. So you can see that you can move from each site, um, all contains lifetime data. Now, what's really neat about OneView and multi-property is that now you have the ability to move between these screens. So I'm now on this, but I want to see what's going on at another one of my hotels. I click it, and now I have all of the data available for that other hotel. So I can hold them accountable, and at the same time, I can also um, keep myself up to date about what, what, is the high, what are the high-level scores and what could be affecting that hotel occupancy from that. And then finally, as competitors, and, and Ryan is so right, you know, understanding your comp set is so important. And we do this in every other aspect of our business. We do this, especially with Smith Travel Research, we look at what our share of business is. And so we do the same thing here in this. This is where we take your top five competitors and we look at how you stack up against them in city rank, how you stack up against them in total review share inside of your market. Um, and then it gives you another kind of cool look. And this would be the roll up of all five of your hotels. Um, in your comp set, and it gives it this comp set data against you. So you can see like, so this is everybody together. How do I fare against the against my market and how do then my competitors? So here's my competitors in that same market, and I can see how well they fare against the market and, and me. Um, and then again, we also have this really great 12 month roll up um, that goes at the bottom um, the bottom of the screen. Um, where you can then select between properties and see like a real clean high level look um, of what's happening inside of your market and inside of your com with your competitors. So um, yeah, taking all these things together, we also have the ability, and of course we're going to show a little bit later, to take this data and combine it so you can get multi-property uh, reporting as well. I'm going to push this back to Ryan. Okay, thank you, Jason. And up to this point, at, we have only talked about user-generated content. So what about telling your own story, right? What about the, uh, a property website or a portfolio website? This is absolutely critical when it comes to hotel groups, when they're talking about adding assets, when they're looking for uh, renovation money from banks. You know, so this is the place to tell your story. So a couple best practices when it comes to both portfolio and individual property websites. And the first one, again, is optimizing that management group portfolio site. So no matter what your goal is, again, you want to create a space that you are telling your story, your identity, your mission statement. We work with so many management groups. We know that, yes, you can't put uh, all of them in, in one particular category. They are all individuals. So you wanna show that individualism so that you can start um, showing that to, again, investors or other properties looking to join with you. From there, what you wanna do is create some consistent pages for individual properties. Again, this has to do with uh, getting those direct commission-free bookings, um, but it's also to show off your portfolio. Using templated sites can be very effective and efficient when it comes to, uh, again, creating a space where you're telling your story about your individual properties. And we mentioned this before, integrating direct booking channels and social media platforms. We need to create highways and channels that travelers can be pushed to, uh, to cut down on those OTAs. We know the impact that an OTA, uh, OTA commissions have on a individual hotel's revenue profile. So for a management group's revenue profile, you're multiplying that exponentially. So this is absolutely critical in trying to drive direct bookings is integrating your social media and uh, linking to your uh, direct commission-free sites. And lastly, we talked about it before, data. Right, analyze where your traffic's coming from. See where there's more uh, opportunity. Are you getting a lot of social media hits? Are you getting it organically from SEO? Uh, paid, um, paid traffic as well. Um, and then see how well that's converting. So with all this data, you really will give you a game plan and a blueprint on kind of how to move forward uh, with your goals and objectives for 2019. So with that being said, I'll send it one more time uh, to show how Jason can uh, kind of how OneView is using websites as well to show that ROI.
So thank you very much, Ryan. I just wanted to uh, show this website really quick. This is one of our partners right now, one of the management companies that works with us, and we do a website for them. And I think they've done a really great job. You know, Ryan has been talking about where your goals are at um, in a multi-property environment. And if your goals are, you know, at how do I get more hotels? So how do I take on more management uh, contracts? Or maybe it's how do I convince investors to let me build more hotels or build more hotels with me? Both of these things really speak, your, your website really speaks to both of these things or, or could. And that's where you have these great images and you have, you know, your logo, but it's also about your culture and what you stand for as a company. And, and I think this hotel did a really great job or this hotel company did a great job where we, they put mission statement and core beliefs along with um, things, more traditional things like portfolio, um, their, their team, um, the solutions that they do. Because, you know, it, let's face it. What you do in terms of moving the needle for hotels is really what is attracting people to come and, and, and either work with you or have you manage their hotels. So, you know, there's the economy of scale like payroll and accounts payable and all of those things at the top level. But your ability to demonstrate a strategy that can drive business um, and that can solve some of these really basic problems like reputation, social media, um, and direct booking that all of those things together, your ability to show those strategies um, can really make the difference between you and another competitor taking that hotel uh, company, uh, the management of that hotel. So I think there's some really great stuff here. Um, it, and then again, looking at uh, going back to those solutions, if you're looking at how do you drive local business, having a website for your hotel really does that. But you look at your Facebook, your website, you know, so social media, web, um, reputation, all of those pieces going together as the as really the the curb appeal and the look and feel of these individual properties to a prospective guest. So that's where I think all these strategies that Ryan is talking about really come together. And then if you get into one view, again, you get all these great alerts, um, but we have a really great website analytics piece um, where you can really dig in and see like what, what Ryan was talking about, where um, where your business is coming from, you know, what avenues, and then really who's coming in and seeing, and then what are they doing? Are they booking? Are they just looking? So again, you have the ability to do this in a multi-property environment where you can click on a website analytic, and you can then go from property to property and see different analytics. So so all of those things pushed together can put a really great uh, strategy in place for you. Um, and especially if you employ a lot of the other tools, so we have the software that drives this, but then we also have the other aspects where we have people that can actually drive these solutions for you. So let me push this back to you, Ryan. Awesome. Thank you, Jason. And what we've been talking about this entire time, a lot of those final steps and best practices have to do with data. And with multi-property uh, groups, there is so much data. And trying to figure out what all of it means and how to put an action plan together with all of these reviews and all of this social media content and, and traffic from your website, it, 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 can, it can be difficult and it can be, uh, you know, very hard to interpret. So some of the benefits to kind of portfolio reporting and analytics is, is giving you that visibility across the entire portfolio. And this sort of creates a baseline. Sometimes it's a little bit, you, you might have uh, different, uh, different levels of hotels within your pro profile and it might be hard to put on a an, on a clear baseline uh, but tools like OneView can give you uh, the chance to get that visibility and from that visibility you can then hold properties accountable um, if you are a local level autonomy uh, identity that you clicked on at the very beginning this is how you can you can really hold them accountable and you can see exactly how each property is performing if they're not posting four times a week if they're not responding within 48 hours uh, it's tools like this that can consolidate all that information and and really give you a, a good view of how they're performing at the property and from there, you set some very strong standards of performance, right? So if you are in that uh, acquisition mindset and you're starting to add these uh, properties, you now have a standard of performance in place that has proven 
that it's worked before. And, and you can start to hold, again, everyone accountable if they're not hitting those standards of performance. And lastly, and probably most importantly, investing wisely. Whether this be uh, the time, if you're, if you're debating between uh, sending someone out for training for one property or another, where do, you send, where do you invest that time? If you're looking for capital investments in 2019 and beyond, where, where is, your, uh, is that capital best served? And this reporting and analytics and data can give you um, the path to, to making the best decision. So I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, send it over J to Jason one final time, and he can, he'll show you the type of sentiment analysis uh, and reports that we're talking about here. Oh, thank you, Ryan. So the, the report you, you're looking at right now is our sentiment analysis report, and this comes from our Respondent Resolve Service. And this is where we actually tag reviews as they come in. And we can glean data from all this text. So you see like all these reviews you have sitting out there where all of that text actually contains data points. And those data points, um, we capture those. And we capture those in, in the form of, of sentiment tags. So we can take every kind of aspect of your property. And, and if somebody's talking about it, we know what they're saying. And we know if it's positive or we know if it's negative. So you can look in that same, that same kind of view we've looked at before where you can see a roll-up reporting. You can also see the most mentioned things. So for this hotel, it looks like service is mentioned the most, um, at least in October. In September, it looks like maybe location beat it out a little bit. But you can look and see, hey, is there something that guests are, are particularly upset about? And if I could fix this one thing or if I could, if I could optimize this one thing, would that change my reputation or could that actually really, really move me forward? And just like Ryan said, how do you determine, uh, you know, whether or not you need new beds or whether or not you need new flooring? A lot of times that CapEx comes up, you know, right around this time of year and it's, you know, everybody's just kind of guessing about what they need. Well, this you can really dig into and buy property and be able to really pull some of this data out. Um, and so it's not just for CapEx. Obviously, this also speaks to that local um, a strategy where you know this could be going wrong and it could be something where you could look at across many properties and see maybe some commonality um, and it could be something that you'd pull all the GMs in together and do a mass training so um, that's where the respond and resolve um, uh, sentiment analysis comes from and it's just it's a fantastic report um, it really puts you in the driver's seat in terms of, of, of capitalizing on all that data that's available the next thing I want to show you um, is, is um, some multi-property reporting. And these are just straight reports. You can receive these um, weekly or monthly. Um, you can have it by property. You can select property groups by um, regional manager if you've got regional managers or if you just want to see it by groups of, in a city. Um, the report has the ability to show you every site inside of um, that's that, where you're receiving reviews, the positive, whether they're positive, neutral, or negative. It even gives you the ability to take that same timeline that you're running the report for and take a look at the difference between two weeks. So I, I look at where I'm today on this week, and then I look at last week, and then I can see the difference um, of what's, what's happened inside of my market. So there's, there's all kinds of ways to slice and dice this data or give you this data in, in different kinds of consolidated reporting, um, all ways that you can um, push then back into the local feed uh, and help properties make sure that they're making the most out of the reputation and social media that they're receiving. So with that, I'm going to push it back to Ryan. Great, and thank you, Jason. And I'll just end the call uh, and wrap up this call by just saying, you know, no matter where uh, your identity lies, um, you know, I challenge you to really see where you can streamline your marketing efforts. And, and you know, whether you're a top-down approach and you're just looking for efficiency, uh, local level autonomy, which I know uh, a majority of you are, and you're looking for accountability and, and a way to get visibility as well throughout the, the entire portfolio. If you're in an acquisition mindset, you now with this tool have a new tool to attract new assets and properties. And if you're in a asset optimization, you now have a tool which makes it simpler to implement those advanced marketing campaigns to ensure effectiveness. And you might be in a top-down approach now, but could be looking to switch to a local level. Maybe you're getting big. 
and and vice versa. So, you know, we work with uh, property management groups. We love to do it because we know that no property management group is the same. Um, every single, we actually have a team dedicated to it. And every single goal and objective, we are along the way to help them achieve, to make sure that when it comes to their marketing strategy, it is streamlined and it is effective. So as promised at the beginning of the call, this is my direct uh, contact line uh, and, and email. Please, please feel free to reach out. We would love to hear your story and, and figure out a way that we can partner with you. Um, in fact, with this uh, webinar today, we're actually doing the OneView tool that we've demonstrated throughout. We're doing a 60-day free trial. And again, I would challenge you to sign up your properties, take a, take a hard look at your review flow, the amount of reviews that are coming in, uh, the social media posts that are, are coming in, and really give yourself um, you know, a, a really good blueprint going into 2019 of where you can become more effective in, in, in your marketing for your group. So uh, if you ask a question, we will be following up with those personally. Um, I want to thank Jason for his time and thank everyone on the line for taking the time. And we hope you have a fantastic rest of your week.